What's good fellow creators? Hope you're all having a great weekend. Today I wanted to show you how easy it is to use the portrait editor within Luminar AI. And I'm going to walk you through my personal process when I edit portrait photos. So here I have an image of April, which I'm sure you guys have seen quite a bit on my channel. Uh, I do love working with her. And uh, typically I shoot in raw. So as you can see, the image is pretty flat, pretty boring. Uh, oh, and I purposely do that so I have more control over the final image. So instead of using a template, I'm going to show you how I go through my edit process. So one of the first things I always do with Luminar AI is I start with the Enhance AI option here under Essentials. And uh, with this Option Accent Eye Slider, I'll bring it to about 50% just to see how this looks. So if I do a before and after, and basically it's brighten up the background and touching up the exposure, which I quite like. Now, before I do anything else really is I'll zoom into the face to see if there's anything that needs cloning out like this, see this little hair strand here. Uh, I might take that out. Uh, this one, maybe I might take out, uh, but the other ones I leave because, you know, I like that natural look. And the reason why I start with the clone is because if you make changes to the image, like color, contrast, all that stuff, and then you do cloning after, which you could totally do. Uh, it's just with Luminar, for some reason, when you, when you do the clone, it reverts back to the original. So if I could show you this really quickly, just so that you know what I'm talking about, I'm going to over-exaggerate the temperature here and the tint, just as an example, okay? And if I go into clone now, you see it's going to revert back to the original raw image, which I, I'm not sure why it does this. Other programs that I use that have cloning tools, they keep the changes you make. So as you see here, it's reverting back to the original image before I use the clone tool here. So I'm going to reset this and uh, start with the clone tool. And we're going to take care of this uh, stray hair here. And uh, if you don't know how to use the clone tool, I'll leave a link in the description below or on the end card on a video dedicated to using the clone tool. But basically how this works is that if you see on the screen, it says click to set source. And what you're doing here is you're selecting the the area or the texture that you want to clone that you want to copy so i'm going to go ahead and finish this hair strand Right. So now when we zoom in, you see that the hair strand is gone and I did lose a bit of texture uh, because I was doing it so fast. <laughs> but we're going to smoothen this out in the next steps uh, coming up. So once I'm done with any of the cloning I, I want to do, uh, this is where I will work on you know, my lighting and my exposure. So I'm fairly happy with the exposure. I think I can brighten it up just a little bit. So I'm going to bring it up just a tad here. And I'm going to warm it up just a little bit so we get kind of that, you know, uh, yellowish orange kind of finish. And it is, you know, in a garden where there's flowers and greenery. So we want to complement the scenery right now her skin is fairly white uh, you know in person her skin is that white but we do want to add uh, some of that color so I'm gonna add a little bit of tint as well just to bring out some of the redness so yeah I'm pretty happy with that skin tone now it is a tad bright as you see on the hands and the chest area here it almost has that high key look 
Now, if I wanted to, I could kind of bring those highlights down just a little bit so it's not as white. Uh, or I could leave it uh, to, to keep that high key look. So I think I'll just bring it down a little bit. And I'm pretty happy with the contrast and shadows. I'll bring up the contrast just a little. And yeah, that looks great to me. One more thing I like to do with Structure AI here is bring it down to, let's say about 50, uh, just to smoothen out the background even more. So if I turn that off, you see how it kind of smoothens out. It makes it more creamy as if you're using a lens at the 1.4 or 1.2 f-stop and actually if you see it smoothens out the face too but I don't want that to happen so what I'm gonna do is delete it from the face you know I just want the background to be smooth so I'm gonna delete it from from her face and some areas in the hair everything else I'm gonna leave I'm just going to take a little bit of it off because I do want that sharpness in the eyes, you know. You don't have to be too accurate with this. There you go. So now that I have my composition, the exposure and all that stuff ready, this is where I'll do the final touch ups on the face. So the first thing we're going to work on here is her eyes. Uh, I don't need the face light at this point, but you could use it. Um, so we're going to look at the eyes here. We're going to zoom in. Now the good thing is I do have the catch lights in the eyes. This one probably could use a bit more, but we'll work on that afterwards. Um, if I bring the iris flare up, that'll enhance it just a little bit more. Eye whitening, I tend to put just a little bit. You don't want it too white. And then the eye enhancer, I'll typically put it at about halfway just to give it a little more sharpness, a little more detail. Uh, I'm fine with everything on the mouth. Uh, the teeth isn't showing too much. So we're gonna skip over here to the skin. Now what I like to do is bring it halfway up and to see is it too much does it still leave the pores and the texture uh, because that's what i like to see you know i don't want it so smooth if i bring it up to 100 percent here that it, it looks so fake you know what i mean so now as we see it here it just looks a little much for me so i'm going to put it back to the 45 here uh, shine removal may or may work for you know for highlights that are just a little strong but uh, I don't think I need it at this point and if you remember uh, we had that strand of hair here and now you see how it's kind of smoothened out if I do a before and after you see we come back here so remember how I talked about the catch lights um, if we wanted to increase the uh, left eye here, well, our right, uh, her left, what I like to do is go under Dodge and Burn, click on Lighten, and I'm going to bring the brush size to really small here. Uh, I'll leave the softness at about 80, and the strength, I'll put it probably about 40. And what I'm going to do is just brush over this area like once or twice and I'm going to enhance this area here so it pops out more so look at the difference here I'm going to turn this off but see how much more that pops out now so if we zoom out I'm going to close this now we've got a bit more catch light coming so let me do again a before and after see how much difference that makes and that really just gives the picture that nice sparkle in the person's eye. At this point, I'm super happy with the picture itself. Now what I wanna do is enhance the background just a little bit. So this is where I like to use uh, local masking. So if we go into the little brush area here on the right and we click add, we're gonna click on basic 
So with the local masking, I'm going to warm it up uh, just a little bit here. And again, we're focusing on the background. Don't worry about the subject because we're going to max that out. And uh, I think I'll play with the saturation. We'll saturate it to about 39 here and increase the vibrance to about 20. That might be a little too much. I think I'll bring the saturation to 25. Bring that vibrance down just a little bit, okay? So yeah, she is looking really yellow here, so we're gonna take that out. So next step is to click on the erase tool here and set your radius, softness, and opacity. Now I'm gonna leave it uh, bigger. I'll leave the radius bigger just so I can delete this quicker. And what I'm doing again is removing the mask uh, from the subject. Again, you don't have to be super accurate on the edges here. Um, if you do need to be accurate, uh, take your time. Okay, and then I'm gonna, actually I'm gonna bring out the opacity more so it's stronger. There you go. and just gradually delete it from April here. So if I turn this off, you see how kind of dull it looks. And when I turn it back on, there's just a little bit more pop to the image. I am gonna go back again to here and just again give it a little bit more warmth just a touch there we go i like that so if we look at the before and after here much much more different uh, much more lively kind of very warm look so as you can see with Luminar, it's super easy to edit photos, you know, this is not, you know, high fashion type of editing where it looks like it's done in a studio and with these fancy lights. These are all done with just, you know, my Sony a7C and natural lighting. And uh, I don't like to make the photos over processed. I still want it to look good but I want it to still look natural with some natural touch-ups, you know. Uh, you know, there's a time and place for that. You know, there are people that do this for a living and there are people that, you know, do that high fashion look. I'm not one of those guys. I'm just showing you guys how to use the program and should you be interested in, you know, photo editing and maybe you want to take pictures of your kids or your wife or your friends and you just want it to have that really pro look uh, and without having to learn Photoshop or any of the more advanced editors, uh, Luminar makes it super easy for you as you just saw. And one last thing, a quick shout out to all the recent subscribers that have come on board. Uh, that means so much to me, you guys. You know, I at one point did not think I would have a voice on this platform. And we're almost at 900 subscribers. And by you guys being part of this community, you're telling this average Joe uh, who was very insecure, very... Uh, introverted that I can have a voice on this platform and what I'm sharing with you guys is actually useful so a special shout out to my friends in India especially I noticed all my analytics besides Canada and the US who is you know my highest percentage viewer uh, you guys are starting to move up on the chart so namaste my Indian friends uh, I love you guys there and everybody else watching around the world and um, it really does mean a lot to me guys that uh, yeah I could do this thing you know so again much love and respect to all of you guys we'll see you in the next one